Matthew Caldwell is going to talk about his experience from Mozilla and Suzanne Myers of RealPage. And uh, they're going to talk to us about building high-performance recruiting teams and recognizable talent brands, even in those situations where you don't have a lot of resources or structure in place. And I think regardless of the size of organizations you're working from, the resources you're starting with, you're going to get a lot out of this. So please help me welcome Matt and Suzanne. Thanks, Wade. And uh, sorry about them royals. <laughs> well, speaking of consistency, I think that we need to be consistent. Absolutely. You know, in honor of the great Ed Nathanson and, and Chris Hoyt, we want to do a quick little selfie. We need all of you guys to be involved. So Ed, you want to come up here? Rob, you guys want to come up here? <laughs> For those of you who have been to a few Talent Connects, this is a little theme, and we want to we we keep, keep this going, keep it going, especially with Ed. You know, we want you in here, man. Oh. We want you in here. We want you as part right. of this. Right <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. So in all seriousness, we're, uh, Suzanne and I are very happy to be here. We're very excited to be here. We want to talk about uh, some of the things that we've done, the transformations we've made at our companies around recruiting. We're two totally different companies with two totally different products. Uh, and the challenges that we face were different. But a lot of the things that we do and a lot of the, the solutions that we come up with, we think will align very well with many of you people out here and many of the jobs that you guys are doing. So real quickly, right off the bat, a little bit about who I am. I'm Matt Caldwell. I've uh, been in recruiting for almost 18 years, uh, started off in executive search. I started two consulting companies that work with early stage VC backed uh, startups growing from one person to 50 people or 50 people to 350 people in a compressed time frame. Then about five years ago I went in house and started uh, running recruiting for a startup. And about two and a half years ago I joined Mozilla to run recruiting for Mozilla globally. Uh, a little bit about Mozilla. I'm sure you guys all know uh, who Mozilla is. We create the best browser in the world, Firefox, absolutely. <laughs> There's my team. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we have uh, currently about 1,300 employees in uh, 13 offices in, in nine, countries or nine countries globally. And actually, we have employees working in over 40 different countries around the world. My slide's a little less busy than Matt's. I've worked for two companies in my recruiting career. I started um, my recruiting career at Aerotech, where I went through boot camp. Um, I don't know if there's any techers out there, but they have an amazing training program, and I'm grateful for my experience at Aerotech. That opportunity led me to RealPage, which at the time, 12 years ago, was a startup company based in Dallas, Texas. We design and develop software solutions for the rental housing software space. In my 12 years, RealPage has grown to 3,700 employees from 300, and now we're in five countries. So we're going to talk about uh, our challenges today. And the challenge that I had to face when joining Mozilla was it was uh, a company that had grown very organically. Uh, and the team that was there in recruiting, for the most part, the people on the team were exceptional. But they hadn't had a leader for almost a year. And so the foundational fundamentals around recruiting were lacking. And when you talk about growing a company from about, 14, from about 400 to where it is today, a little over two years later, to 1,300, you needed those fundamentals in place in order for the organization to be able to scale. So I focused on four key areas that I could address that could really create some efficiency for a lean recruiting team. And the first thing that I looked at was bottlenecks. Uh, bottleneck, there were bottlenecks all over the place. And, and if I wanted to attack all of them, that would have been a big problem. So what I looked at is attacking the bottlenecks where I could have the highest amount of impact. And the, the uh, bottlenecks that I identified were around bloated process, excessive workload, and employee referral program abuses. So there wasn't a whole lot of process at Mozilla. But the process that was there was bloated. Uh, when we look at opening and closing of recs, I reduced the number of approvers down to three on the front end and three on the back end, which was a reduction of about 75% of the overall uh, approvers that were in, in place prior to that, which translated into about four to five business days per rec of time saved when it came to moving through the process of hiring someone. The next thing that I looked at was excessive workload. When I joined Mozilla, uh, I sat down with all the recruiters, and, and it was in August of that year. And Mozilla being a lean company, they don't have the luxury of hiring a whole lot of junior people. It's mostly mid to senior level individuals, and there's a lot of unique roles that they have to fill. And my recruiters had, on average, 65 roles that they had to fill between the end of August and the end of December. 65 mid to senior, 
unique roles. Totally unrealistic uh, expectation. So that's an easy fix, right? I, I, and, and I took advantage of some really easy fixes. We added some recruiters, we added some coordinators, we added sourcers, and a little bit later I'm gonna talk about some of the other things I did that helped alleviate the workload. And then the employee referral program, uh, that was something that uh, we all know the value of it, uh, and, and we all know what it can mean to an organization. Unfortunately, people at Mozilla didn't look at it as an opportunity to bring good people into the company. They looked at it as an opportunity to make a bonus, to get some money. And so we saw situations where, I'll give you an example, we had one employee who referred one person to 19 different positions, from a mid-level UX engineer to a senior level engineering manager on the platform side. There is no way that that person is applicable for all those roles. So I had to create some SLAs with the organization, let them know we want your referrals. We, we want those referrals because that's the best way to grow the organization. But we need you to do it in a way that is healthy. And so I required that everybody that refers someone has to justify why they're good for the role, and they cannot submit a referral to any more than two, or excuse me, three roles at a time. That allowed for the recruiters to focus on giving good quality to the, refer, the referrals that come in, and also other avenues of pipeline. When I took a look at the structure of the organization, I realized that there wasn't a whole lot of structure around recruiting. <clears throat> the uh, recruiting team, they, they were great recruiters, uh, but they were working on anything from one recruiter to be working on a, a marketing role, a finance role, a sales role, and an engineering role, and any so, sort of mix therein. And while a good recruiter should be able to recruit almost anything, a good recruiting process Makes, it focuses recruiters and aligns recruiters in a way where they can deliver the best service to the organization possible. And so, uh, kind of like what uh, we've heard throughout this, this last couple days, I aligned the recruiters in a way where they were very focused. We had recruiters working on sales, recruiters working on marketing. Since the majority of our hiring was in engineering, we had multiple recruiters aligned with different business units within engineering so that they could become very vertically aligned with those teams. And that did two things. One, it helped them really get a great acumen of what the teams needed when it came to talent that they were bringing into the organization. And two, it, it got them to the point where they were viewed by the organization as a true partner in their success. And that's one of the keys to my philosophy about recruiting is, like people have talked about throughout the day, Recruiting really should be viewed as a business partner, somebody that is critical to the success of the organization they're supporting. And that's what I did by aligning those recruiters that way and then aligning the support groups up underneath them. The sourcers and the coordinators all aligned underneath the recruiter in these organizations so there was a very deep vertical support structure around recruiting for the organizations that they were supporting. <clears throat> the next thing I looked at was around process. Now, I, I talked about the fact that there was some bloated process. The reality is, is there was not a whole lot of process. Uh, when you talk about scaling an organization, you need uniformity. You need consistency. You need the organization to understand when they deal with anybody in the recruiting team that it's going to be the same every single time at every step of the way. And so I looked at three key things that I thought can make some very big impact on the success of the organization when it came to uniformity. The feedback form was something I looked at right off the bat. We were getting feedback in instant message, in text message, uh, on your cell phone, at the desk phone, uh, people walking by the desk telling someone that, or an email. So there was no consistent place where we could gather feedback and then assess the candidates adequately. So I required that everybody in the organization provide feedback in a form that we put in the ATS that was very structured. So that every single time they provided feedback, it was in a structured way, and it was in the same spot. So that when you look at two different candidates or three different candidates, you have the ability to accurately assess them against, the other, uh, against each other. Then the debrief meetings. The recruiters now drive the debrief meeting. The, the point of a debrief meeting is for everybody that gave feedback on a candidate to justify that feedback. To, if they have questions, maybe they feel like, you know what, I, I'm, I'm on the fence here, maybe somebody else uh, was able to assess something differently that, I might, that might make me change my mind. Ultimately, the point is for the recruiters to ensure that the hiring manager has got all the information they need to be successful in making a hiring decision for the person that they are talking about. And then the, fee, the intake meeting. Uh, this is something that helped drive that business partner professional services aspect of the recruiting function at Mozilla. There's a, this is a snapshot on the, up, up on the, uh, the, the board there of, of the actual form that the recruiters use. Every single time they open a new rec, they go through all sorts of different steps that are in this form. And there's two things I want to highlight. One is the part where it says working together. This is where the recruiters design their 
their alliance. They, they create a contract with the hiring manager about how they're going to work together. What my expectations of you are. What your expectations of me are. What's the consequences when one of us doesn't meet those expectations? How do we work around that? How do we move forward? And then the uh, part where it talks about identifying decision makers and the interview panels, if the hiring manager starts thinking about who is going to interview these people when they open the rec, they're going to be much more thoughtful about it. They're going to really come to understand who should be the person that assesses technical skills. Who assesses culture fit? Who assesses problem solving skills? It's a great thing because they really think deeply about that, that, that role in the, in the interview process and it creates a much better uh, process for the recruiter as well because what the recruiter does is when they're done with that meeting, they send an email out to these interview participants saying, hey Joe, you're going to be interviewing for this role and you're the person that's going to do the technical skills. Jane, you're going to be doing the problem solving skills. Jim, you're doing uh, the culture fit. And that allows those individuals to then become much more invested in the recruiting process as well. So I talked about uniformity around process and about kind of branding internally. We also needed to look at the external branding of the organization. When I joined Mozilla, the career site looked like a Craigslist page. It was ridiculous. It just, I, I saw that and I said, that's got to be one of the first orders of business for me. And so what I, I, I set forth is redesigning the careers page and I had some very, I had two really important things I wanted to, to make sure that the careers page highlighted. One, every human being on our careers page needed to be a Mozillian. They need to be somebody who worked at Mozilla. And every single space, every single office, every single physical structure where somebody, where these Mozillians are sitting or working or whatever, needed to actually be our office, one of our offices. Because I wanted it to represent what it was like to work at Mozilla. Really help the organization, or really help the candidates get a feel for what it's like to be part of Mozilla. And then I took, the, I took advantage of the, the momentum from that and branded our Facebook, our Twitter, our LinkedIn, all of those sites with the same images so that if you are a candidate and you access what we're, uh, one of our social sites or one of our sites online, you have the same experience. And then finally, uh, something that I could talk a whole long time about uh, and something that I think people need to spend a little bit more time on when it comes to being a leader in recruiting is coaching. Coaching as a leader is not what you do on your one-on-ones. It's not what you do at your annual reviews when you try to determine whether or not someone's worthy of, of a raise or a promotion. You need to be always coaching. If there's one area where you can invest time and get the greatest reward as a leader, it should be in coaching your team. Every day, you can see opportunities where they CC you in on an email, you could help them with it. They, they're sitting off talking about some problem. Do they feel comfortable saying, hey Matt, come here, we have a problem, we can't figure it out, can you help us out? Do they feel comfortable asking you that? Or do they feel intimidated that you might judge them because they don't know the answer? As a leader, you need to be able to mentor and coach and train your people every day. That will reap such great rewards when it comes to the efficiency of, of your team. But coaching goes beyond just your team. You're the subject matter expert at your company for hiring for a reason. You need to leverage that. At Mozilla, we created training for hiring managers, helping them appreciate how they could align with recruiting, how they could manage their team in the recruiting process, how to write job advertisements, not job descriptions. We had training that we put together for interview participants, how they, what their role in the interview process was, how they can work with recruiting, how to ask questions of candidates to really get to the heart of uh, what their talents and capabilities and passions and, and desires are. And then we have skills labs. It's an ongoing thing that highlights one thing that we've trained in one of our training uh, curriculum and allows people to go deeper into it. Maybe ask questions, say, hey, here's a real world example of where I totally failed. How could I have done it better? If you coach your team and you train your team, and you lead and mentor your entire organization to be good recruiters, your entire organization will become a recruiting machine. The challenge that we faced at RealPage was a little bit different, because as I had mentioned, I had been at RealPage for, for 12 years. So we had established processes and procedures, and in fact, our recruiting team is aligned a lot like yours, Matt. But the, what we faced was this. We went public in 2010 and we were in hyper growth mode. So the, de the, the, the demand from our hiring managers for talent was increasing and so was the demand for technology talent across, um, across the areas where we operate. So we really had to transform our talent brand so that those individuals outside of our industry would know a little bit more about who we are. And so the recruiting team took that challenge head on um, beginning in 2013. So the very first thing that we did was 
we had to take a step back and start thinking like marketers. A lot of times, recruiters don't necessarily view themselves as marketing professionals, but in reality, we are becoming marketing professionals, right? We're sales organizations and we're marketers. So we had to take a step back and really identify who was our target audience and what, we, what did we need to say to them. So we actually assessed and identified who were the target audiences that we were going to go after and what was the messaging that we needed to send to those target audiences. So we had the information, right? We interview candidates day in and day out. We, we even have new hires that we interview to uncover what were their drivers, where did they hang out online, where did they work before they came to RealPage. And so we were able to condense all of the various positions that we recruit into five target audiences. And so now we actually knew who our audience was so we could start to craft messaging so that we could communicate directly to those audiences. We created five key value propositions out of these sessions. And those are the five now anchor value propositions that the recruiter team uses each day when they're recruiting and engaging talent. I will say the most transformational thing that we changed in 2013 was the way that we measured recruiter performance. So in the past, of course, over the past couple of years, we've heard about digital, digital marketing and social recruiting. So we knew that those things were trends, but we weren't quite sure how we could become an expert at them. And we also, had, we, we had tried it in the past, I'll tell you. We tried it in 2012 and it didn't work for us. And you know why? Because recruiters' performance was not measured based upon their social recruiting uh, tactics and strategies. They were measured based upon traditional metrics, time to fill, uh, acceptance rate, et cetera. So we, we completely changed our scorecard in 2013 and, and it really did make a big impact. Today, the recruiters have a very diverse um, d diverse workload, okay? So not only do they fill positions, but now every recruiter on our team is a part of a strategic initiative that's pushing our talent brand forward. What we did is we divided our strategy into four teams. So we have four strategy teams and every recruiter is a member of those strategy teams. And those strategy teams are focused on one piece of pushing our talent brand forward. We had to create a name for ourselves so that the audiences that we were going for would recognize our name. So we started building our brand, and that included the value propositions that I had discussed, some new content that we needed for our website. We also had a team solely focused on fig figuring out social recruiting and what that looked like. We started following and emulating companies that we knew were doing it well. That team today now manages our content. So every day we know exactly what we're gonna post on our social channels and we measure uh, the performance of those posts too. And we're still figuring it out. We're not perfect at it yet, but this team is focused on that. The third team is focused on building our pipeline. We know that we have five target audiences, so we can pretty much predict what types of positions we're gonna to need to fill in the coming year. And this team is focused on getting, in, getting that pipeline full of uh, software engineers, marketers, sales professionals, operations, and that team's focused on not only building that pipeline so that we have a lot of candidates coming into the top of the funnel, but they're also focused on communicating to that pipeline once we get them in there. We need to continue to put our name out in front of those individuals so that they recognize our name when a recruiter gives them a call or sends them an in-mail. The last team focuses on uh, recruiting for the future, staying focused on building a brand at the college level so that even if we don't have an opening for them today, we have those individuals in our pipeline and they're more aware of who we are so that when we do reach out to them, maybe three or five years after they graduate, they have a recognition with RealPage. Two things that we weren't expecting that came out of the strategy teams are this. Number one, I had a recruiter lead one of each, there was one recruiter that led each strategy team. So I did not lead these strategy teams. I did not make decisions for these strategy teams. These strategy teams set the pace and deliverable for their strategy teams um, independent of any leadership. So I'm really proud of that because I don't think that we would have gotten as far as we got if they didn't have their freedom and flexibility to take it to the next level. We also did quarterly updates. So every quarter, the recruiters would get together and create a presentation that showcased what they delivered that quarter for their strategy team, what those results were, and what their plans were for the upcoming quarter. 
It was exciting. We looked forward to these updates because we couldn't wait to see what the other teams were doing. And it created a healthy competition amongst the recruiters. And that just, man, that had us go going faster than we had imagined. So um, and now I have a whole team of recruiters, too, that know how to build a really killer presentation and actually deliver it. So those were some outcomes that we weren't expecting that really helped uh, propel the team. And I will tell you that this is where we had the most fun. We had the most fun, and, and you can even ask, I have some of my team members here, this is where we have fun every day. This is the part that gets us excited about what we do. And I'm going to share a little bit more of the outcome of what our teams together were able to produce in 2012 and 2013. So the very first uh, thing I'm going to talk about is social, because I think that's relevant for everyone, regardless of what size company that you're in. We did not have social platforms. We, we had created a Real Page Careers Facebook page, and we had created Twitter handles, but we really weren't using them because, quite frankly, we were a little bit numb. We didn't really know how to do it or how to do it well. So the strategy teams helped give us that confidence. So one of the campaigns that we decided um, that, that the team pulled together was a campaign, and it was called the I Activated My Potential campaign. It was a social campaign to drive internal awareness that we had a Real Page Careers Facebook page. And we leveraged our employer brand tagline, which is activate your potential, in that campaign. So it not only made the internal employees aware that we had an employer brand today, but we got them very involved. And so we went around the world and we asked our teammates to pose with selfies of when and where they activated their potential with RealPage. And I can tell you this was pretty fun because pretty quickly in the first 10 months of this year, we saw 292% lift in the number of people that were engaging with us on our Facebook page. And this was because we got our, our other teammates involved. The second thing that we did was we invested in the Work With Us ads. This was the only financial investment that we made to, to produce any of the output from our strategy teams. And let me tell you that the Work With Us ads worked absolutely wonderful for us. We saw that we had a lot of employees clicking on the view jobs in the follow company tab. So we knew that that investment was paying off. So we also uh, you know, started talking a lot more about LinkedIn internally so that more people became aware that we were using this tool and that they could also use this tool to bring in new talent to the business. Within the, within the last year, we saw 92% growth in our talent brand engagement. So I would say that there was a pretty strong ROI on that purchase. Sure. Through our social uh, efforts too, we also saw that our LinkedIn followership increased by 153% in a year and a half. So again, we're a company that not many people recognize. We don't have that consumer brands, but the recruiting team has done a really great job to send out some messaging that's been able to capture the audience targets that we've been going after. When we started this journey in October of 2012, we had about 2,600 LinkedIn followers, and today we have over 22,000 followers. So we are outperforming several of our competitors in terms of our social media presence. Some of, the, some of the other output that came from our strategy teams, and this again was very unexpected, is I have some really creative recruiters. We figured out how, be, how to become marketers. We all know that imaging is very powerful online. If you post content, you're not going to get the engagement that you want. So recruiters figured out how to create cool content, leveraging various free sites that are made available to anyone, actually. And um, over time, we've been perfecting how we can create these images and then leverage them and use them in our news feeds. This is also a way we call these job aids. So rather than posting a whole bunch of you know, uh, boring job descriptions out online, we leverage these images that actually capture that hidden talent that maybe would not otherwise be looking for a job, but the image and the content on that image grabbed their attention. So just so, so another, um, another campaign that we ran on, the, Im on images was we changed it a little bit. So we've been experimenting, right? So um, recently we created a an image that uh, highlights a social engineer, uh, I'm sorry, a search engine marketing position, an SEM analyst. Uh, and we decided we were going to put a little bit more content in there about the position because SEM and SEO is a very hot skill set. And what we found was 
people are definitely engaging with us. In the first three hours, we had 52 clicks on that image. So we knew that that image was working well for us. And so we're starting to notice the images that get higher engagement. We're now starting to build a consistent look and feel to our images so that, again, like marketing, we can become more consistent over time. Again, we're learning how to do this. We're figuring it out. So. Um, the one question that I often get asked, because um, I've presented our, our successes a couple of times, was, OK, so your recruiters are really focused on the fun stuff, right? Because this is the fun stuff. What, did you fill jobs, right? And the, the irony is, is that we actually fill jobs at the same pace that we had the previous year. We still, on average, fill around four and a half jobs per day. We have an average fill time of 38 days, which for anyone that recruits technology positions, we think that this is a pretty good fill time. 95% of our offers are, are accepted, and those candidates walk in the door and onboard. But most importantly, we saw that our employee referrals lifted to 39%. So we've been successful in getting our employees engaged in the, the uh, hunt for talent, and it's been paying off for us. Those are some great numbers, and I think those are great ways to, uh, to assess whether or not you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I like to look at as well is, is something that actually Lou talked about on Monday, about quality of hire. And when you look at retention, retention, there's a lot of things that go into retention numbers, and quality of hire is part of it. There's other, there's other things that go into it as well. But it is a good indicator that you're possibly doing a good job around quality of hire. And when I joined Mozilla, the, the retention was trending down in all the three key critical areas we needed to focus on. And that was something that was a big problem and a big concern for me. And the results from all of the work we've done is that over the last couple of years, all three of the main uh, areas that we hire in are all trending up. And for me, you know, that's not a, a complete answer to the fact that the quality of hire is going up, but that's a very strong indicator that the quality of hire has actually been improving. Another thing that I look at in terms of whether or not uh, our, the recruiting team is doing a good job, whether or not the function itself is, is serving the needs of the organization is around employee referrals. I don't need to talk to you guys about the value of employee referrals. You get it. But one of the things that I, I, I think about when it comes to employee referrals is it actually indicates a couple things. Is the company, are the people and the, and the employees of the company happy? Do they want to employ their friends? Uh, d does the process work well? Uh, are they properly incentivized? Do the recruiter, do they trust that the recruiting team is actually going to do a good job uh, dealing with their employer referrals? All of those things are factors that could indicate why a, a number is good or bad. But ultimately, you all agree that a, a good number, a higher number is better. And when I joined, I made it a goal to make it 40% of, our, of all, all of our hires comes through employer referrals. And I'm happy to say that through Q2 of this year, and actually starting in Q4 of last year, we've been north of 40%, currently trending at 41% of all of our hires uh, for this year come through employer referrals. Another thing that I look at that is something I think is extremely important, and what we've talked about, what I talked about earlier, is whether or not the recruiting team and the recruiting function is viewed as a critical business partner. Not an order taker, but someone that is critical to this organization, this hiring manager, this VP's uh, ability to deliver on their business drivers and their business goals. And so we sent out a survey uh, at the uh, end of June of this year and asked everybody that had participated within recruiting or with recruiting as a hiring manager or an interview participant for the last 12 months whether or not they viewed recruiting as a trusted business partner. And I'm happy to say that nearly 92% of the organization views recruiting at Mozilla as a trusted business partner. To me, this is a number that, I'm, that I, I just have so much pride in what we've been able to accomplish, what the team has been able to accomplish at Mozilla. Mm -hmm. So Suzanne and I have talked about a lot of things. We've thrown a lot of things at you. We want to kind of boil it down into four key takeaways for you. And, and the first one is something that I don't know where Suzanne got this from. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to steal this phrase, because uh, when we were prepping for it, she said, plus two talent. Um, it, it aligns with ex my philosophy very well, and so I'm stealing it. I'm going to use it, and I might give you credit you at some point. But it's, it's the concept of the fact that hire people who have a ceiling that is far beyond what they're doing right now. Their horizon in terms of capabilities needs to be out of sight. Hire a recruiting coordinator who's going to take your job someday. Hire a recruiter who's going to be a VP of a Fortune 500 recruiting organization someday. Hire people who have an immense level of capabilities, and your team will be lean, and it will be efficient. The second uh, takeaway that I have for you is simply to empower your team. If we did not allow the recruiting, the strategy teams to be empowered to move fast, which meant they needed to make decisions and they uh, were able to make those decisions to go fast, I don't think we would have had the success that we would have had in such a short period of time. 
I also would have never found out how many really creative recruiters we have to be able to create that fun content on a daily basis. So make sure that it, it's social. It's, gonna be, it's not going to be earth shattering if there is something that goes out there that has a typo or you know, that has a little minor thing that you might change later on. It's OK. We, um, we've had fun along the way. And I think my team will tell you that they um, had a lot more fun having, they, they definitely felt that they had skin in the game. The other piece was, I have a team that's um, hungry to grow. Like Matt said, we take the philosophy of what we call plus two talent, which means hire people that can promote at least twice within your organization. When you empower them and you give them fun projects like that to work on, you're feeding their desire to grow. And our engagement survey has always stated that training and development is an area of opportunity for a lot of companies. And oftentimes that training and development is not in the classroom, it's with real live projects. And so that would be another key takeaway that I would have for you. And so finally, we're all hiring for the same people. Bottom line is, Suzanne talked about the five buckets of talent. You guys are hiring for software engineers. We're hiring for software engineers. You're hiring for salespeople. We're hiring for salespeople. So what you need to do to be successful is know why you're different. Why someone joins RealPage or, do, or joins Mozilla or joins your organization that's a software engineer is going to be different because of why your company is different. Really get to understand deeply what it is about your values, your mission, the purpose for your company's existence, and really focus on that fit. Uh, Jeff Weiner the other day talked about fit. Laszlo talked about fit. Really focus maniacally on making sure that you focus your recruiting organization and your recruiting efforts around that fit. If you do that, you will transform your recruiting efforts, your recruiting team, and your entire recruiting, your entire company into a recruiting organization. They will be lean and they will be a machine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.